I'm absolutely fascinated by that photo of that team of researchers from the 70s or 80s yes. at UNSW and what they went on to achieve. Yes. What was the, what's the sort of secret sauce there? How, how did they, or the key ingredient if you like, how did they, how did your group manage to export not only their technology but also themselves to the world? What, what was happening in those labs at UNSW? Well, I, I think it was just a matter of, you know, once you got a technical lead um, and had a, team, a critical mass of people mm. Uh, that knew the technology very well, it became very easy to maintain that lead. So we, we just sort of kept getting further and further ahead of what, what the other people were able to mm. do just because of the, I guess, the um, cr critical mass I, I would ascribe it to. And, and was it also a, a part of that sort of follow-on investment commitment as well? Sort of, you know, once you're in front, stay in front by continuing to, to, to invest? Yeah, no, no, it's very exciting when you're in a position like that and you're, you're really doing the best yeah. in the world. And mm. I think that sustains a lot of uh, extended effort. So mm. effort above and beyond the call of duty to, to try and keep that position. Yeah. So a lot of excitement established with every little increment of performance that yes. we made. Yeah. Um, there's a question here about how much more scope is there for researching solar PV. And you touched on a few of the developments with the PERC technology. We've only got a short amount of time, but could you go into a little bit of what's, yeah, what's yeah, involved Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think that's a very good question. And it's, it's an important one because a lot of people say, you know, now solar is the cheapest form of electricity. We didn't do anything more. Like, it's, the job's done. But um, if you go back to those learning curves I mentioned and that 40% uh, learning rate that we're on now, sustaining that type of learning rate is going to depend on um, more better technology mm. being in the pipeline. So uh, at the moment, the industry is concentrating on progressing along that learning curve, you know, partly through increased production volumes, but also through improved uh, performance of the cells. So that's where the PERC technology mm. comes in. So that's the here and now of what's driving that learning at the moment. But further down the track, improved efficiency can also drive uh, increased learning. and we're aiming for a 50% boost in the performance that you can get from a perk cell by stacking a second cell on, on top of the, the perk cell. Yeah. So that's research that ARENA is supporting now, but I think it's going to be very uh, important in the future to, yeah. to keep that cost driving down to the very low levels that I think um, solar can eventually reach. Because it's really simple technology. You just stick these panels out in the sunlight. If you consider the difference between that and what you have to do yeah. to generate electricity by burning coal, it's just yes. a eons apart in terms of simplicity. Yeah, there's a few less moving parts, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, so no, <laughs> no moving parts. And yeah, it, and it's a bit like microelectronics. Uh, the cells can become more sophisticated with time yep. um, while costs are reducing. So yes. a very similar situation. Um, we're nearly uh, out of time, but I'm, I'm going to uh, ask one of these questions that I think is a good one, because you talked a lot about um, the, the, the benefit for the resources sector. Uh, and something, again, that we've done a bit of arena is looking at the, the use of um, solar and other renewables in um, mining, um, mm -hmm. off-grid off mining processes. So are you anticipating that the refining process for all the resources you've mentioned will also be solar powered to sort of close the loop? Yeah, yeah. So um, harking back to Phil's talk on the hydrogen, mm. you know, so... You know, that mightn't be the perfect application, but certainly in uh, refining some of our ores, for example. Yep. And um, you know, as Phil mentioned, you've got the ability to um, better match uh, supply and demand yep. through yep. cutting back on non-critical processes when electricity is scarce. Yes, brilliant. We're going to stop there. I could keep going on, and there's, there are lots of great questions coming in, but we'll stop there and, and have a break. But before we break, can you please thank Martin Green? Thank you.